you think your purpose was predetermined or do you think you can create your are you asking this or are you no, i'm asking you oh i believe it's predetermined yeah 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 yeah, yeah. do you i'm actually not sure <laughs> i believe well see and i am looking at this from the christian's point of view i believe that god has a purpose for you but I then believe that he wires you in such a way right. that you enjoy the purpose. Yeah. So we go on this discovery thing of what do I want to be, what do I want to do, da, 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 da. But ultimately, you can pray that God tells you what that purpose is or whatever, or reveals it to you. But if you actually sit down and calm down for a minute and you really, really dig into what you really love and enjoy, you will find that, that it aligns. Yeah. That what you were created to do is what you love doing. Yeah. But sometimes we don't necessarily pause to reflect and find find what that is. And also we get distracted by multiple interests. For example, here's how we can misalign it. When I was in secondary school, one of my highest grades, if not the highest grade, was business. Love business. Mostly because it came well, I love business because I actually love money. Yeah. <laughs> I love the coins. <laughs> but also, I was naturally good at it. Like, I was getting good grades in business. Now, someone who is a career guidance counselor could have said, you should study business. The grades are highest there. You right. find it easy. It comes to you second nature. Study business. It would have seemed like a reasonable thing, but it would have been a big mistake. No passion. It came to me easy peasy. So what? I get you. I'm so freaking what? I was just in business. Do you know what I mean? And so, like. I never, I never, I was like. Where's the passion? I can get, I can get like good grades in it. Yeah. Never. Do you know, I didn't jump up and down on the inside when I read this stuff. It just came to me super easy. Now, on reflection, now I'm up at a point in my life where I want to merge the two, right? Yeah. I want to merge my love of biology, science, medicine with my love of business and I'm looking for avenues to explore that. Like I'm thinking to myself, this has to be a job where the doctor is also in need of, you know, a business thing. And I know there is because I've been doing my homework on it and I'm going to find my path eventually. But in that space of being a secondary school student, I also prayed a lot about what does God want me to do? You know, should, what path should I take? But that's one thing I did. But also, I really leaned into what I enjoyed. And God knows I enjoyed biology. Yeah. I enjoyed it. And does it shock, does it shock anybody that like God wanted me to be a doctor? No. It doesn't make sense to then think that he would put you in a position where you have to strive. Now, of course, in medicine, I had to strive. I mean, that had its challenges. But at least there was a baseline interest and passion that... This is a philosophy. I don't even know if anything I said there is factually true, but I genuinely believe that if you think about it deep enough, your purpose aligns with the things that love you, that you love most of all. Like when you were talking about tutoring, bro, you were smiling from ear to ear. Ain't nobody can tell me that that's not a purpose. You cannot make that stuff up. Yes. You know, you cannot make that up, and also you can't teach it. Go to college what you want. Get a master's in education. If you don't love the stuff, how are you gonna sustain the the challenges that are gonna come? Yeah. Yeah. You know? You live in free will? 100 percent How could we not have free will? Then yeah, like when you believe in free will, then that, that contradicts and like what God wants us to do. Oh my god, God wants us to do all sorts of things, but give us choice. <laughs> Think about the whole I don't wanna say disaster, but the fall of mankind from the biblical perspective came from free will. He wanted Adam and Eve to stay in this garden, to live happily ever after. He comes, chats with them, goes back up to heaven, all's Gucci. But then what happened within, I don't know the time span, but a very short amount of time, Eve goes off and eats his apple and turns the whole story upside down. Free will manifested itself ASAP. He didn't, he could have, before she swallowed, I mean, in all of his awesomeness, stepped in and go, don't swallow the apple. I will never let you do it. No, he didn't do none of that. That thing was happening and he was well aware of it, but he let it happen because if God doesn't support our free will, I do not know who does. But if you love me, like, what would you let me get the apple? 
because he you made me so you made me this way he made you he made people in his own image you said kids are a mirror of us right they see they absorb god made us in image of him as in you look in the mirror when you see yourself you see the image of god in likeness to him and essentially that means he created us with the same capacity that he has capacity to create capacity to have will and to think about options capacity to do everything that he does think about plan b's and plan c's and plan d's and permutations and all of this stuff mind you as far as the scripture is concerned god had angels singing and dancing and praising him he had it all he didn't have community or community or relationship and i don't think he wanted to create something that would just obey i actually think he was looking for the exact he was looking for choice where's the fun in that where uh, do you know the example i like to tell people when we're talking about this particular specific topic I always say, and find, funny enough that so far when I'm talking about this thing, I'm talking to guys, it's so funny. This is my third guy that's in this, and I use the same example and it's perfect because they're always guys. I'm like, if you had a girlfriend, you had two girlfriends, one of them, every time you meet her, you go to the back of her head, you press the button, and she says, I love you. Like, no man's business, I would do anything for you. And she means it. But you had girlfriend number two. Every time you see her, she says that free of charge. She looks at you knowing fully well that you ain't shit and says i love you again means it from the bottom of her heart and thinks you're you're the best thing since bread and butter which would you pick well, obviously there's more meaning there's more meaning in the choice right because well number one she didn't have to and that's what makes that love beautiful because she could have picked any other guy to say this to you and she looked at all our options selected you and goes i'm gonna love him in the same way, God already had this adoration, this attention from all the angels and everybody else up there. And he thought to himself, I want relationship, I want choice. I want to put them on air, give them everything that they could have possibly wanted. I want them to look around and look at me and go, I love God. If you break it down to the bare minimum, God was looking for a relationship. The same thing that we're all out here trying to die over. Yeah. The same thing, and it's not funny, it's not surprising that we all want community and relationship because we were created in the image of God. God himself wanted, you know, we want the same thing that God's love. Everything that you want, we everything that you want, that I want, that humans want, God wanted it too. He wanted a relationship, he wanted security. He, it's the same stuff really. And of course it's the same stuff. He created us to be like him. It's not shocking that it's the same stuff. Yeah.